All right. Um, what I want to do is I want to do a little overview of complex numbers so that we um, can kind of get an idea of what a complex number is. Well, first of all, what a complex number, or at least a standard form of complex number, is a plus bi. And what a plus bi is, your a is going to be what we call our real part of our complex number, and our bi, which kind of looks like a c, our bi is going to be our imaginary part. I'm kind of going to explain a little bit more of how we're going to get into this or what these are important. Um, but a couple things you guys need to know about real numbers. So let's say I had 3 plus um, 4i. That would be what we call an imaginary number. And if I said 3 plus 4i was equal to c plus di, these two complex numbers, that's a complex number and that's a complex number, these two complex numbers are only equal if and only if my real is equal to my real and my imaginary is equal to imaginary. So therefore I can say 3 has to equal C and 4 has to equal D for these two equations to equal, for these two complex numbers to equal each other. So that's an important part. When we're dealing with complex numbers, we're going to be dealing with our real portion, which is your A, and then the imaginary portion. Now, I'll talk about I here in a second. What does I represent? So when you're adding or subtracting, so when I say A plus BI plus C plus DI, well, that's going to be in the exact same thing. What we're only going to do is this only says A, you only add the real plus the real plus your imaginary plus your imaginary. Okay? So that's a very important part that when we're going to be adding or subtracting real numbers, you have to make sure that you're going to uh, add your real to your real and your imaginary to your imaginary. So, let's talk about I. Now, some of you might in your math career come to a problem where you get a square root and you get a negative number. Let's just say negative 9. And what you figure out is there's no number that is exactly the same. Remember, square root is the exact same number multiplied by itself to get um, uh, to get nine. So, what number multiplies by itself to get nine? Well, that'd be three. But this is a negative nine because three times three doesn't equal negative nine. Negative three times negative three doesn't equal negative nine. Only three times negative three, and those two values are different. So, what we do when we have a negative number, it's impossible for us to uh, find take a number that's going to multiply by itself to give us a negative. So therefore what we do and what we've learned maybe some of you before is we write i as a square root of 9. Or another way if you want me to rewrite it, so you can say, oh you just factor out the negative 1. Well here's actually what we're doing. I can actually rewrite this as square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. Maybe like this. times negative 1. And then, by using my properties, I can split that up into square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. We know square root of 9, that's going to leave us 3, but what can the square root of negative 1 equal? And that's where i comes in. And we're going to write i. Now, is there a difference? Write it like that. For our, and what we're going to be doing, we're always going to write the i at the end. Because remember, we're talking about standard form. So our imaginary, you're going to have an imaginary part, and then i is going to be at the end. So now this is very important because one thing you guys should know is we know that i equals square root of negative 1. i squared would equal negative 1 times square root of negative 1, which will equal a negative 1. Because square root times square root be square root squared, which will cancel out, equals negative 1 i cubed is going to equal um, negative i, this multiplied i on both sides, i times negative 1 is equal to a negative i, and i to the fourth is equal to 1. So that's just kind of some uh, important things for you guys to remember when doing this. Um, and I'll show you why this is so important. When you're dividing, all right, um, a lot of times maybe in geometry in your earlier math or uh, algebra classes, you had something like this. And we said, hey, you can't have a radical on the bottom. And you might say, well, why not? I don't know. I'm just going to get rid of my radical. We call it rationalizing the denominator. 
Well, the reason why you can't have a radical on the bottom is we don't know the value of the square root of 3. It goes on repeating forever. So it's not a rational number. It's irrational. It's going to go on forever. So you can't divide that into a number 5. So we rationalize the denominator to get 5 radical 3 divided by 3. Well, the same thing is true for i. You can't divide i into a number. That's like, it's also, remember, i is like the square root of negative 1. We can't divide by the square root of negative 1. So to get i off the bottom, you're going to have to rationalize with i. So therefore, you get 5i over i squared. And remember, earlier, I said i squared equals negative 1. And last thing I want to talk about really quick is, let's say, when I'm multiplying, let's say I have 5, um, if I did 1 plus the square root of 2, with radicals, we would multiply by the conjugate, which would be 1 minus the square root of 2. And the reason why we do that is because this would have give us the difference in two squares. Well, when we're dealing with a radical, um, let's say 3 over 4 minus square root of 2, I'm sorry, 4 minus i, and let, I need to get rid of this 4, I need to get rid of this i, I'm going to have to multiply by the conjugate. And there's something that's really helpful. When you have conjugate pairs, all right, that eliminates your i, and I'll show you how. I'm not going to, excuse me, work this whole problem, but... This is a difference of two squares, meaning my middle terms are going to cancel out. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative i times negative i is a negative i squared. i squared is negative 1. 16 minus negative 1 is 17. So therefore, I've just eliminated my i on my bottom. So whenever you're given a binomial, um, you're always going to want to use conjugate pairs of imaginary numbers to get... Um, to get rid of it when you have it as a denominator. So that's just kind of a basic overview um, of uh, complex numbers.